Anyway, this is Ona. Welcome to Art of Awakening. And uh, it's been a little while since I posted. It's uh, been sort of in the middle of this prolonged household move and uh, going a little longer than I expected. So all my stuff is kind of piled in the living room right now, um, including some of my recording stuff. So <laughs> um, getting a lot of beautiful lessons on patience. So it's it's a uh, kind of fun time. Um, but I, I am able to here to sneak in a little time to do you a reading for the full moon. This is the second new moon of August 2019. Um, so new moon going to Virgo and um, reading will be really addressing the next month. And uh, I think, I don't know about you, but this has been, and I think maybe it's partly because it's been bridged by two new moons, but the month of August has really been one of a lot of introspection for me anyway, and um, I'm thinking maybe for some of you as well. Um, lately, there's been, uh, you know, just a lot of what I'm feeling is kind of a lot of sort of emotional flare-ups. Flare-ups is the word. And um, especially I, I'm feeling this connection with the fires going on in the Amazon right now. Um, a lot of fire energy, okay? So there's a lot of stress kind of coming up to the surface. And so I want to say a few words to that um, because what I am seeing moving forward is I, I just have been getting this um, kind of visions of the, the word shakeups coming up repeatedly this year. I'm really getting that coming up forward for the next few months to maybe even a few years period. Um, and so I'm looking kind of forward in the timeline. Now, I don't see necessarily actual, like, very sharp events, but I get a feeling for a kind of um, trend and what's going to happen in the energy. I'm getting sort of like this bumpy, 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 bumpy. Um, and I'm not saying that to alarm people at all. It's quite the contrary. Uh, but just to expect that there might be a lot of unexpected things. So expect the unexpected for the next few months um, and you know maybe for the next few years we just had a tremendous uh, shift in consciousness on the planet shifting into the more divine feminine and with that there's going to be a lot of shakeups because we're creating a new reality here um, collectively and um, anytime that you do create okay so this is true of any art that the act of creation Kind of commands or demands some kind of destruction. So, like you cannot create a painting, for instance, without you're going to be destroying that that clean slate, that that white canvas, right? You, it's got to be destroyed in order to build something more. To create even the pigments, you got to grind up stones and rocks to create that. Um, so there's that destruction that has to precede actual constructive creating something. Um, if you're creating a house, you've got to either, um, you know, maybe chop down some trees to create the lumber. And there is, uh, you know, sacrifice involved in that. So when I'm saying, you know, shakeups and rocky, rocky road ahead a little bit, um, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to be a negative thing. In fact, it's actually a necessary thing. So um, I know you may have already heard, I've been feeling for quite some time that there may, you know, we may be looking at another, another um, uh, economic slowdown or recession. Um, we're I'm starting to hear that a lot um, <laughs> as, the, as the weeks go forward, hearing that louder and louder, people are believing that. Um, you know, the banking system, there's some pretty, uh, at some point, that banking system of ours, it is just not sustainable. And there's so many things in our society that are not sustainable that they will need to collapse in order for something new to come up out of it. So what I'm getting, the important thing here is, okay, so when these things happen, um, the important thing is to really recognize it, first of all, as not necessarily we want to think it's the end of the world. There's going to be people that are going to be saying this is the end of the world, it's terrible, and, you know, everybody's going to die, and this and that, blah, 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 okay? And this doesn't mean that we have to be head in the clouds and deny that there's, you know, serious stuff going on, because there is, but to keep in mind that um, that that is part of the creative process, first of all. 
to remember, especially in terms of any ecological disasters that are happening, that Mother Earth and nature are more resourceful than we ever give them credit for. So this is a wake up call. And this is a request on the part of Mother Earth to, to help, right? Um, and yes, we should be concerned, but but what's needed because what happens with this kind of thing is the, the 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 panic reaction that actually feeds the flames, right? So what's needed is overall in our society, in human consciousness, on the earth right now, we have an overabundance of fire energy. And that has been true over you know the past few decades to a couple centuries. There's been an overabundance of fire. It's where all the you know the fossil fuels um and like you know even just war activity, the firearms, you know, the development of bombs of you know the weapons of mass destruction, that kind of thing. It's all fire energy. Fire energy really wants to get things done and it's it's got a lot of kind of forestful energy to it. Okay. It's an overabundance of the young of the, the masculine element. Um you know, masculine element has a lot of positive things to it. It can go negative, just like the feminine can go negative, right? So this is, you know, sort of um, a manifestation of overabundance of yang and especially the forceful kind of, um, you know, masculine energy that we are moving out of. And the reason it's coming up so forcefully right now is we're, we're just flushing. The earth is starting to flush this out, right? Um, and so what is needed to happen is to bring some of that fire down, bring in more earth, bring in more water. Okay. Just calm it down here. Um, and so when things like this come up, what can happen is if we buy into the whole panic thing, then we start getting into, we take on that kind of energy. We take on that fire. What are we going to do? We take on the panic. Okay, and that feeds the flames. So what Mother Earth needs most from us and what we need from ourselves um, is to, for us, each of us individually, you can think of each person as like a cell of Mother Earth, right? So we are living pieces, living parts of Mother Earth. Okay, we all play different roles. So there are, it's really easy to look at a situation like this and feel helpless. Okay, and what that well, if we look at the situation and feel helpless, what that does is it feeds that sense of anxiety and that it creates a sense of inflammation within ourselves. Okay, it makes us feel stressed out, which brings on more fire energy, which feeds the flames. Okay, so anything, whether it's the economy or the environment or the people around you or whatever it is, when we get that stress kind of flare up, inflammation reaction, um, it's the 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 thing in the the thing needs to happen in order to get out of it is to be conscious of it okay to be aware this is a pattern this is a pattern that yes we can do something about it okay and as individuals the best thing we can do and that really is effective and i know this this may sound like oh you know just taking care of myself doesn't really help anything but it really does because remember we are all all connected so when we ground ourselves when we bring ourselves back to center what that does is it cuts that negative feedback loop off right at the roots okay or even underneath the roots okay it stops the buck stops right there okay and the, the reason that's so important is that you think of it as a fire break right so when you cut a fire break it's not necessarily anywhere near the fire it's not actually actively fighting the fire right a fire break isn't like pouring water on the fire. It's not like you're not necessarily anywhere near fire. It simply cuts it off. It stops it from spreading. Okay. So the more each of us can be conscious of stress or anything like that, that wants to make us feel even more stressed out. And the more you can just kind of breathe that away and bring yourself back to center and calm and ground and anchor 
um, that is the biggest thing that we can do, even if you are able to do more proactive action stuff, which is great, you know, but even if there's nothing else, that is actually the biggest thing we can do each as individuals is to ground ourselves as much as possible, okay? And to recognize that these loops happen through the emotions. So um, how things manifest is first with the thought or the word, right? Um, the idea, then through emotions, and it's through the emotions that the actions happen, right? So when we start, first of all, having the idea of, hey, these flames aren't going any farther, it stops here, and then feel into the emotions that they're happening. And this doesn't mean to repress the emotions, it means to acknowledge them, you know, allow them to kind of, you know, just acknowledge that they're happening, but then bring yourself back to center, recognize this mm -hmm. is a feedback loop that I'm buying into. If I allow myself to start getting you know, um, acting on the whole stress deal, I'm just going to be going around and around this loop. And I'm also going to be allowing those flames to be passed from me to other people to the earth. Okay, so when we just kind of breathe, breathe down to the earth, give your, um, and you can call on the angels, right? Call on the angels to help, call on your spirit guides to help because they will. And again, these things are more powerful than we give them credit for. Okay, so we are all connected and the more each of us, you know, each additional person that decides I'm not going to buy into this panic anymore, I'm going to stay and I'm going to ground and I'm going to be rational, the more that happens, then the more the people in power who tend to be driven by emotions, right, or driven by um, ambitions, the more they feel around them, the, the, the solid grounding that's going to bring them back, bring them back a little bit to center, whoever is able to actually act. All right. So, um, and, and also just, it's like, if you do feel that panic, ask your angels to help and you ask them to help them help you to, to give that stress, give it to mother earth. And that, you know, when I first heard that, it's like, oh, what, you know, give my stress to Mother Earth, isn't she stressed enough? Well, no, it's because that's what she's designed to do. She's designed to be, she is our mother, okay? She can take that, you know, and a good mother understands that when her child is screaming and shouting, that it does not mean that, um, you know, that that she's able to just kind of take that and hold it to her and, and calm it down, right? Because she stays within herself. Mother Earth is really good at staying within herself, right? Um, so when we give our stress and allow that to drain down into her, that's trusting, that's showing her that we trust her, okay? So if we start worrying and worrying and worrying, that worry reaction, that keeps it up on the surface, that's when you start getting the fires going. Okay, fire's metaphorical or, or, or actual literal, okay? So actually giving the cares, giving the stress to Mother Earth actually just helps her to release it, okay? It entrusts to her that we, we have the faith, okay? And it helps everything to calm down on the surface, right? Because remember, the, the core of Mother Earth is fire. So you can send all the fire you want down to the core of Mother Earth. She can handle it, right? And um, that, that helps as well to uh, keep us individually grounded. So I'm going to pull a few cards here for um, this coming month just to help to keep us, like, see what, see what the animals want to say about kind of the energy coming up forward for us. And the first one coming up is beaver. Okay, so here we are, water, water coming in. Okay, uh, beaver, interesting animal. Um, I'm gonna be posting a video on beaver very quick, very soon here. Um, so it's interesting this came up. Um, but beaver actually does have a lot of the energy that is contributing to these fires, right? You know, it's that industry, it's that, um, um, you know, kind of building stuff, right? Uh, expansion, whatever, you know, so that is that beaver energy out of bounds. That's what we're seeing here. Okay. So this is really saying, okay, there are a couple sides to beaver. So the other side of beaver is um, stewardship, right? So being able to um, 
make things sustainable. So remember that when beaver, um, when beaver does this thing, it cuts down trees and so forth and so on, and it builds. But when it's really in the right place in the environment, when it's when it has found its place, the activities that beaver does to sustain itself actually creates beautiful um, environment for other species. So it really is one of these keystone species that helps to actually create a more sustainable environment for, for many around it. Okay, so we can actually take some of this um, human energy of wanting to create, wanting to build, wanting to be progressive, right? And one, you know, the industriousness, even the financial is associated with, with, with beaver. Okay, so this means that we can take that whole energy, that whole human desire to create and build something bigger, um, to create a better life, right? And we can take that and kind of turn that if in and, and, and work it in a more positive direction. Okay, so this is really a card of hope. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that it's it doesn't mean and, and there's this tendency to look at things like this and, and get very, very judgmental and very, very um you know, just um sort of incriminating and to just realize that not to throw the baby out with the bathwater, okay? That that we, we can we can you know, if we just balance this beaver energy, we can actually work in partnership with the earth and still have that creative force. You know, we as humans, we're very creative beings. We are busy. We like to build things, okay, but we can do it in partnership. And that's bringing in more of that water, that more calming, stilling, kind of cleansing energy mm-hmm. into everything that we do. Okay, so um, next card coming up, otter, another water animal, okay, another, so water is coming forward, um, big time, otter is um, an invitation to play, a reminder that, um, you know, that there is joy in life, right, and that sometimes we need to proactively, you, you know, seek it out, because it's really easy when things get hard to get, oh, it's on this very negative, 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 um, you know, the world's coming to an end, and oh, I've got to just, you know, maybe I just need to put the nose to the grindstone all the time and make sure that I'll have enough money to get through whatever my, you know, that's, yes, we want to be proactive. Yes, we want to think ahead. But let's think about how we can bring celebration into everyday life, how we can bring joy, how we can make life a dance instead of a, um, you know, a march or a, a, a slog, right? We want to make it a dance. And we can do that and still be productive and still you know, um, to provide for our families. And I'm going to pull one more card. Let's see what one wants to come forward. This one, spider, right? Okay, so spider is an, uh, um, it's interesting because spiders have been coming up a lot for me too, okay? So spider, again, it's very like beaver. It's the feminine beaver and spider, okay? Both of these. Um, Beaver sort of epitomizes the, a masculine aspect of of creation, right? Um, and in its dark aspect, it can be very forceful, very destructive. In its um, in its uh, light aspect, it's it's the provider, okay? And it's the provider as it provides for itself. It is um, the side effect is to make life, you know, in the world better for everybody around it, the community. It's a real community kind of thing. Spider is the feminine. Um, aspect of this this whole creative force and um in its negative aspect it can be very entangling but in the positive aspect we're looking at interconnections so looking at how what you do and everything that you do actually does have an effect on everything else okay little old you little old me we have a lot more power than we know that we give ourselves credit for so if you see when the, with the spider web, you touch any little bit of that web, everything feels it, right? You can, you can, that's what the spider does. It sits on the web, and no matter what part gets touched, it feels that, okay? So even little actions that you do make a difference, okay? So if you decide to, um, you know, and I'm coming back to this idea of stress, because 
we are as a society the most stressed like humanity has never experienced stress at this kind of level that what we're dealing with okay so if um if, if, if things feel a little hard once in a while give yourself some credit you are dealing with more stress than any human was ever designed to deal with okay so give yourself credit for the grace with which you've been able to do this even if it doesn't seem like it okay you're doing amazing and so allow yourself to recognize that um, you are part of a whole that you're connected with everything and that you can draw and if you look at these these beautiful um um pieces of the web that you can kind of draw energy uh, i see this almost like a starlight kind of web you can pull energy from the stars you can ask for energy from mother earth you can ask for energy from the angels you can you know you you can ask for this help because we are all connected and as you any little thing that you do for yourself is going to be felt throughout the web of the universe right so um if you're feeling a little stressed even just taking one minute and do a little deep belly breathing, something like that, that is going to actually echo way past your own. You're going to find you do that. You allow yourself to take breaks, to take de-stress breaks, just do things to de-stress a little bit in between. If you're feeling this, um, it will help to cool those volumes, cool the fire, and it actually um, really does make a difference beyond you the planet herself is going to feel it okay so <laughs> there goes my dog flopping down a rest um all right so hang in there if it's been a tough time if it's not um you know not everybody is feeling a, a stress uh so if you are feeling like things are chill and that's great that's wonderful you are being a real anchor of um just 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 an anchor of groundedness for the world we need that okay so if you are ever feeling like who you are or what you're doing is not making a difference or you know i'm not really doing anything interesting with my life or i'm not doing anything big or fantastic don't 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 go down that route because there are people like just like we have cells in the body like i mentioned each one of us is like a cell from mother earth remember that you know there's cells that have all different functions and some some of us are like immune cells and we're we re reacting right <laughs> to things and others of us are like 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 um bone cells right a bone cell doesn't it's kind of long lived and it just sits there and it's but it's structural so if you are one of these people that's like you know just a solid kind of um and and maybe Maybe there may not be a huge amount of these people watching this because a lot of um, the people that are that are going to be watching are maybe going to be a little bit more of the sensitive. But give thanks to the people around you um, who may not be quote unquote awakened, but there are people that are really good, solid souls who are really anchoring um, calm energy on the earth right now. Okay, you may know some of them. And if you do give thanks for them because they're really helping to anchor. And for the rest of us who tend to be more like, whoa, okay, um, it's part of the, 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 the path here in awakening is to learn to anchor, learn to ground and to start to recognize patterns and then to exercise, you know, the, the control of the self to be able to when you recognize a pattern, start to shift the pattern, okay? Um, and right now, a lot of that is learning to breathe, to anchor, to ground, to get more yin and less yang. Right? So have a good one. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this. If you're interested in purchasing one of my decks, it is the Spirit Animal Awareness deck. Um, I'll, I'll leave the link below. Um, thanks so much for your support. And... Um, I'll catch you next time.